Hey. Welcome back to Wani Wednesdays. I'm so sorry guys, I was at the Darts Live USA Open in Vegas last week and I did film a Whiny Wednesday and a Merch Monday. I just couldn't find a Wi-Fi connection to upload the video, so my bad. Also, I'm a day late for Whiny Wednesdays because I honestly just suck and forgot what day it was yesterday. But I have a great video in store for you today with a good topic and I vow to make it up to you guys in the future. Today's topic involves the four things that you learn during competitions. And yes, a lot of this is based on my own experience, but I think most people go through this grace period at some point in their dart life. Because competition is super necessary in the learning process. It's a driving force that reveals certain aspects of the game and your mentality that don't reach the surface at a local level. You have to take advantage of what you get to learn at these major competitions instead of just treating them as these final exams where everything is on the line and everyone is judging you based on that one performance. It's simply untrue. You set yourself up for failure when you build up anxiety about these major competitions and you don't also treat them like learning environments. And I'm definitely not talking about pros out there. Pros have undergone this process already and they have an objective and that's that when they go to these events. I'm talking about myself and players like myself that can relate to me in any way. And treating these competitions as learning environments is just as imperative to your growth as practicing ahead of time before these competitions. So listen up. The first thing you learn at a major competition is number one, how to pursue your passion. You learn what it takes to place in these major events and you get an inkling as to what it would take to actually shoot darts for a living. And unfortunately it would take placing in almost everything that you sign up for, which no one in the United States really does that successfully. But at least you find out firsthand what it would take to actually not only stay afloat and break even, but make a profit. You learn that you have to share a room with five or six people, and since you're the smallest person in the room, you gotta sleep in the chair or on the window seal. You learn that you can't eat a big meal every single time. Every time someone invites you out, you have to go to the gas station for most of your meals. I'm definitely exaggerating, but I'm just giving you guys a glimpse as to how much of a grind it really is, and if you're not winning everything that you're going out and investing in, then you really need to be careful how you spend your money on these major trips. The second thing that you learn is how to overcome your fears. If you're going to be successful in life, whatever success means to you, you need to feel your fear and then do whatever needs to be done despite that fear. I think one of the biggest things people realize when they go to these big competitions is they learn to not care what they look like failing to others, especially on live stream, film matches, they're kind of become less concerned about losing the game and more concerned what they look like losing the game to other people. And that's a major, major character flaw that we all share and that we need to get over quick. It took me about a year to get over the anxiety of how I throw and how I perform in other people. In Vegas, I noticed every single day I become more and more able to way outperform my base skill level because I was becoming less and less nervous about who was watching and who I was playing with. And I became more motivated and compelled to make my trip worthwhile. Each day became closer to the last. And so I had to just stop caring if I didn't live up to anyone's expectation of me. One of the hardest things I had to overcome while traveling around is running into players that I had spoken to online that I respect and look up to and they want to practice with me. Three leg medleys and so I'm worried that I'm gonna look like an idiot in front of them. As if a three leg medley you know completely discredits everything that I've ever done to try to inspire people to go out travel and play and inspire women to raise their ratings. It doesn't, of course it doesn't. But I kept worrying that if I wasn't a shining example as a player beyond a public figure then and my fans and supporters would just be disappointed. So instead of building up anxiety and avoiding those people every time I traveled around, I forced myself to constantly play against those people to get myself used to the experience. Because you never know when you're gonna get mashed up against these people. You can't control the brackets. You gotta get used to it as much as possible. You have to be prepared for anything and you just have to let go of how people perceive you and just try your best. Moving on to number three, and this is one of my favorites because I think it's actually one of the most valuable skills obtained while at competitions and you really don't learn this lesson unless you give yourself the opportunity to learn it which is how to get quality practice time in during competitions. Oh my gosh, the amount of players that don't take advantage of this opportunity is astounding. But at the same time, I'm really not surprised because I think most people travel to these tournaments expecting to dominate or they're only concerning themselves with winning or proving something versus growing and becoming a better player. Because they hit that comfort zone where they believe they're good enough and they're not really willing to consistently challenge themselves anymore. So they don't really get any better, they don't improve, which is fine because I mean, most people use darts as a social outlet to drink. 
and they say they want to get better, but they're not really taking any active steps to achieve that. So for you guys that really want to improve, like truly, deep down, you really want to improve fast, you got to seek out players that are better than you who are willing to play with you because these competitions harbor hundreds of them at your fingertips, ready to play all day, multiple days in a row. It is a, a gold mine of opportunity to grow as a player because better players expose your mistakes but if you don't go in with that mindset of looking for how to fix your mistakes then you're not going to learn anything from those matches another thing i should mention before you guys go find out where paul Lin lives and try to play him every single day just keep in mind that for novice players they're in a situation where they're still working on basic principles and there's a good chance that they won't be able to recognize what other players are doing better so you don't want to play against others all the time where there's a skill gap so massive that there simply isn't a realistic way to account for every shortcoming you make against them. So to avoid being completely demotivated by this incomprehensible skill difference, the best way to improve your game is to play against a lot of different players who are just slightly better than you. That way there are easy goals to set, like we need to improve this parameter, this skill, or this strategy and it's just a little bit at a time. And then the gameplay is still fun and competitive that way. Also, playing against different play styles is extremely important. You can't get stuck sparring with the same couple of people back at home all the time. You're only gonna get better at beating them. You're not gonna get better overall. All right, the last thing that you learn at major competitions is number four, how to recover from bad performances. So this is something that we all should really know how to do already, but you'd be surprised there's a lot of people out there that never really experience that super bad level of play until they get into a high pressured situation like a major competition. And then they react in a really extreme way to their inadequacy. I've done it myself. It's shocking to feel super prepared for something and then just bomb it. <laughs> I mean, just shoot terrible. And it's hard to look at your teammates in the eye and it's just so extremely important to learn from that the very first time it happens and make sure that you recover from it fast as possible so as not to shock the rest of your teammates. Because all players have bad rounds, right? We, we lose easy matches all the time. It's, it's how you recover from those matches and those losses that counts. You have to recover like a professional. And learn how to show your teammates that you're aware of your underperformance, yet you have your emotions in check and you're still trying your hardest. They're not gonna hate you, unless they're assholes. They know how you shoot in league, they know how you perform at a local level, they picked you for a reason, they trust you. My best advice is try not to go into shock when you have those flat lines and you start missing really badly. We've all been there. Your teammates don't want you to crazy overcompensate and hit white horses all of a sudden and hat tricks to make up for that. It's in the past, you had those bad rounds, it's over. All your teammates want for you is to feel comfortable. They trust you, like I said. They want you to not have anxiety about throwing and they want you to have fun and slowly regain that killer instinct and that confidence. So don't try to way overcompensate, just try to equalize and keep your emotions in check and just keep trying. So when you don't perform as expected at these events, and it'll happen at some point in your life, try your best to just acknowledge it and don't let the failure consume you because all anyone wants is for you to just regain and reach a comfortable medium. All right, I hope you guys take inspiration from my one year of travel this far to go out and pursue your passion, overcome your fears, and take advantage of the plethora of players out there that are just at your fingertips waiting to make you a better player. And get up when you fall, keep trying until you make it. Learn these lessons and live your best lives. Thanks for winding with me, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the link that says subscribe at the end of this video and it'll take you straight to my homepage. And I promise not to miss another Whiny Wednesdays, even if I'm at a competition. I promise I'll find a Wi-Fi spot next time. No excuses. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.